The command to trust God with all your heart means that the total personality, our minds, our will, our thoughts and desires are to be committed to God's care. God wants us to be totally dependent on him. This calls for our absolute obedience and surrender to him in every realm of our life. The commitment of the heart to God means that all of the beliefs and decisions of life are to be submitted to him because while human wisdom is inadequate, divine wisdom is sufficient for guidance in life. Good morning to you, members and supporters and friends of Bethel, the house of God. It is such an honor to be worshiping a great and powerful God 
and from where I stand, you look good in the house of God. This is Sunday, the fourth day of October, in a very unusual year, 2020. We are just happy to be alive and enjoying a measure of health. If God has been good to you in the circumstances you are now in, say, bless the Lord. And if you still thank him for his faithfulness, say glory to God. If he is the center of your being, say hallelujah. Don't fool me now. If he is the center of your being, say hallelujah. Oh, we thank God today for this fellowship of 230 years. And we thank him for his faithfulness. We invite you now to look on the screens behind me and behind you in the congregation. We're going to read from the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 4, and we are reading from the King James Version, Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 13. Ephesians 4, 1 through 13. Because we have persons who with COVID-19 distancing are not in our physical sanctuary, but our home, I am going to read every verse so that they hear it at home, but you will read every other verse. Ephesians 4, 1 through 13, we begin and I read first the first verse. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord Jesus beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He ascended the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ together, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in this day. On this beautiful Sunday morning, we sing together our opening hymn, Awake my soul and with the sun, thy daily stage of duty run. Shake off dull sloth and joyful rise to pay the morning sacrifice. Let's sing and praise this glorious God who the psalmist clears, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament displays his handiwork. Isn't our God a great one? Let's worship and praise him today.
refreshed me while I slept. Grand Lord, when I from death awake, I may of endless life heartache. What a joyous song to sing on this joyous and beautiful morning. Awake, my soul, and with the sun. The writer is telling us that the sun gets up every morning without any help from you or me and it shines and fills the day with light and warmth so that we could go about our daily business and it tells us and it challenges us awake with the same kind of refreshing renewing and forgiving strength and face today with God one of those verses says suggests and control each day that I live that I may bring glory to your name this is a complete invitation to all of us to come with all of our situations to this great God who created all things the God of all creation to worship him to praise him suggest control direct this day all that I do or think or say we should say that prayer not not only today but every morning would you like God to control your being and all that you do and say come today and sing this last verse glory to thee who saved us kept God is so good let's glorify him as we sing this final verse together and praise and adore his holy name glory to thee and great God for the majesty of your name for the miracles that you still perform for the signs and wonders that you bestow we come to you in voice and in person this morning standing firm here at Mother Bethel and calling out your holy name because beside your name there is none other there is still God in the midst of pandemic power in your name there is still God in the midst of loss and bereavement and sickness and calamity and crisis and challenge a power in your name and because you are omnipotent this powerful God who is all places at one time we pause as a collective humanity just to say thank you thank you for holding each and every one of us and the rest and remaining of the entire world in the hollows of your hand 
You are just that good and just that awesome. You are a marvelous God who is taking care of each and every one of us. You are a covenant keeper. So for every covenant you have made in your word with your created, we stand in humility and our voices raise a hallelujah because we know that your word cannot return to you void. So God, voices and hearts combined, we simply say, thank you. Through all the changing scenes of life, thank you. It didn't have to be this way, but in your divine providence, we are still here. Thank you. Things could have gone adrift and gone astray, but you have us walking in the path of righteousness. Thank you. God, we remember your son and your servant, the angel of this house, and we say thank you. We pray ministering angels and the healing balm of Gilead to touch his body right now in the name of Jesus. And we end that with a thank you. We lift up your servant, Timothy Stewart. God, you know all about him and you are a God whose stripes can heal. So heal him now. Thank you for his ministry. We thank you that we have the victory. And as we go on in worship today, God, for all of those assembled and those watching virtually on online at different social media platforms, may the excellence and expectation that comes out of this service yield a particular anointing on them that will transform their lives right where they are in the name of Jesus. May your name be glorified through this service. May the angels glory as the voices come together in wonderful melody. But God, most of all, may your presence be with us in this time. All glory and honor be done to your name. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever and all of God's children say Amen My brothers and sisters the first three words of each of these verses says breathe on me that's something you don't want anybody to do with you in this time of COVID is it be socially distant right now you don't want nobody breathing on you but I need the breath of God. Don't you need the breath of God? Especially in COVID times. Breathe on me, breath of God. Open your hearts. Open your life. Let God breathe on you today. Let's sing together.
breath of God, so shall I never die. Live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Oh, we will live with him forever. Let him breathe on you today. Let's sing. Let God's people say hallelujah. Let's now read together our church's covenant. Having been led by the Spirit of God to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord by faith, and having publicly confessed him by baptism in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we freely and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We pledge, therefore, by the aid of God's Spirit, to live together in Christian love, to work for the advancement of God's kingdom through this church in knowledge, holiness, and mutual care, and to support its ministry by a faithful stewardship of money, time, and talents, and to sustain its worship ordinances, doctrine, and discipline. We also pledge to maintain family and private worship, to rear our children in the nurture and spirit of the Lord, to seek the salvation of all members of our own families and of our acquaintances, and to strive for maturity in ourselves and in our fellow Christians. We further pledge to follow Christian principles of morality in our daily living, to be ethical in our dealings and faithful in our commitments, to promote the unity of fellowship by the proper attitudes and careful speech, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, and to be zealous in our efforts toward the advancement of the kingdom of God here and throughout the world. Let us bow in prayer. Father, as we have assembled here, we do so in obedience. For your word in Corinthians reminds us that as oft as we do this, we do this in remembrance of Jesus, and we show forth his death till he comes. And in so being present and about to participate, we also testify of, of our commitment to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, of our faith that he is Lord and he is your son. We also show our commitment to live lives that are pleasing in your sight. And so today, as we prepare to partake, we say thank you for this privilege and this opportunity as we congregate and as we, we follow obedience. We bless you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And let everybody say. Search me.
our five newly baptized persons will remain seated they will be served the Lord's Supper Jesus with his disciples had a final meal a last supper he took bread he blessed it break it and gave it to his disciples he told them that the bread represented his body that would soon become a living sacrifice the body of the Lord Jesus Christ that was sacrificed for us let us eat together in remembrance of Christ who died for us. In like manner, he took a cup, a chalice. It was filled with wine. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, telling them that the wine represented his blood that would soon be shared for them. Blood flowing from his brow, his hands, his side, his feet. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for us. Let us drink together in remembrance of Christ who died for us. Senior Deacon Stephen Thompson will lead us now in prayer. Let us bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, greatest lover ever, lover of our souls, we thank you that your word declares and we believe it that greater love hath no man than this, than, than one would lay down his life for a friend. We thank you, Lord, for loving your son, Jesus Christ, to lay down his life for us. We thank you that by the laying down of his life, by the laying down of his life, we can have eternal life. We thank you that by his stripes, we are healed. We thank you, Lord, that by all that was done on Calvary, we have victory in Jesus, our Savior, forever. Thank you, Lord, for the victory. Thank you for dying in our place. We thank you, Lord, that because you died in our place, we have a blessed hope of eternal life. We look forward to that life, eternal, when we will be with you throughout the countless ages of eternity. But until then, 
our hearts will go on singing until then with joy we'll carry on no matter what comes our way because we believe in the finished work of Calvary bless us individually and collectively thank you for loving us God thank you for loving us Jesus thank you Holy Spirit who cleanses us by that blood and empowers us to live right in Jesus name we pray and God's children say amen our father and our God we thank you first of all for this day that you blessed us with allowed us another opportunity to come into your sanctuary to give praise honor and glory to a God who is worthy and now we thank you for this time when you allowed us to partake in our giving wherein we would give back to you a, a portion of that which you have blessed us with. We thank you now, Heavenly Father. May these gifts be used for the furthering of your kingdom is our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to give to this ministry, there are four opportunities for you to give. One, you can give to us through our Royal Bank of Canada account our main branch account, the account number 2895688, or through our Bank of the Bahamas account. The main branch again, branch code 157, account number 1350001435. Otherwise, you can give through an internal transfer if you have a Royal Bank account or a Bank of the Bahamas account, a bank-to-bank -bank transfer if you have online banking from another institution, or over the counter if you happen to be in one of those institutions and would like to make a deposit over the counter. Or if you'd like, you can simply go to our website, Historic Bethel Baptist, and click on our Give button. That will give you an opportunity to give via credit or debit card. And you can specify exactly which ministry you would like to give funds to so that we can direct those funds accordingly. God bless you. I just want to praise you forever and ever.
Let's just pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you for your love and for your faithfulness to us. And Lord, as I am about to mount this sacred desk today to be your oracle, Lord, let them not see me, but see you. Let them not hear me, but hear you. And whatever is done today, Lord, let only you get the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I've chosen as my topic today, trust God. Trust God. Trust God. And my scripture comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Well-known scripture. The New Living Translation says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. And then the New International Version has, uh, it's the same thing, but they use some other words in key places. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Then finally, the King James Version, which is more familiar to all of us. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. These verses of scripture taken from the book of Proverbs are often quoted because they provide wisdom and direction for our lives. I thought that it would be an appropriate scripture to undergird my topic for today, trust God as we face one of the most difficult times of our lives, and as we seek to provide focus for our newly baptized members who will be officially added to our church today. As people of God, we are called and challenged to live out our lives in a hostile and sinful world. Despite the fact that there is a constant battle raging between the forces of good and evil, we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, and our neighbors as ourselves. Additionally, we are called to be loyal, faithful, and obedient to God, to trust and to acknowledge him in all our ways so that he can direct our path. We're expected to be holy and righteous, and we're required to be true, courageous, and bold. These requirements are not to be compromised because God has given us power over the forces of evil. As the world quickly changes, 21st century Christians are finding it more and more challenging to stay on the straight and narrow because we are allowing the world, not the word of God, to define who we are. We have placed more faith in man and what he can do for us than in God who is omnipotent because some of us still do not know who is our source. We are in this COVID-19 pandemic, and it appears that we have forgotten that God is in control, and that it is he who is all-powerful, and that we have also forgotten that it is he that supplies all of our needs, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We have forgotten that the earth is the Lord's, and all they that dwell therein. We seem not to realize that God has no economic crisis. He's not confined to time or space. As a result, and in these drastic times, it appears that many have put aside the God of our creation, and the gods we have created are causing havoc in our lives, because in our quest to be successful, we are compromising our values and godly principles to acquire things, to be accepted socially, or for prestige and for fame. Even the gospel of Christ has been watered down to the point where we do not offend anyone or make them feel guilty. Right now, it seems that the world has more influence on and in the church than we have on and in the world. And our Christian witness has diminished to the point that we are not taken seriously. It is 
sometimes difficult to tell from our attitude and behavior and from the way we dress, the places we go, or the things we do and say, who we are or whose we are. We are afraid to take a stand against the wicked forces of this world, and we allow them to treat us like trash. We need to rise up in this nation and take a stand against immorality, injustice, and wickedness. If the people of God do not take a stand, and if we allow ourselves to be intimidated by the forces of evil, who will do so? Our country will continue on the destructive course that it is now headed. And if we're not careful, we too shall be taken over by the Babylonians in our land and those from other lands. That certainly is a sobering thought. It happened to Israel. God allowed it to teach them a lesson. They were warned by prophets to repent and turn from their wicked ways. Instead, they disobeyed God and turned to idolatry and every kind of wickedness their minds could conceive. So members, and those of you who through baptism have decided to leave the world to follow Christ and become his ambassadors, you will do well to heed the wisdom given in these two verses and let them be the guiding force throughout your lives. And those verses again, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So we'll just look at the first um, command. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. This first directive is to trust in the Lord with all your heart. The definition of trust is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Trusting the Lord with all our heart is the opposite of doubting God and his word. Trusting in the Lord requires us to depend totally on him in every situation in life, whether good or bad, happy or sad. It requires us to recognize our insufficiency and the fact that we are incapable of assuring our own success and happiness and that he knows what is best for us. It requires us to put our full confidence in him, in the small and in the big things. It requires us to have the faith to believe that God is who he says he is, that he can do what he says he can do, that we can depend on his word and his promises, that we can rely on him for our security, for our protection, our provision, and that he can and will sustain us. The command to trust God with all your heart means that the total personality, our minds, our will, our thoughts and desires are to be committed to God's care. God wants us to be totally dependent on him. This calls for our absolute obedience and surrender to him in every realm of our life. The commitment of the heart to God means that all of the beliefs and decisions of life are to be submitted to him because while human wisdom is inadequate, divine wisdom is sufficient for guidance in life. So because of what we know of God, one may well ask, why is it so difficult to trust him, especially some Christians? We know his word. We know his promises. We know from personal experience what he has already done for us. Is it because we have selective amnesia? Or is it because we do not want to submit to his way and to his will? Or we would rather lean to our own understanding, maintain control of our lives and manage our situations, and go the world's way because we are able to obtain some measure of worldly success that makes us rich or powerful or famous. As a result, many persons build up huge financial empires, create towers of Babel to make a name for themselves because they know the right people. They are able through their connections to secure good jobs and they're prepared to do or be whatever they have to to gain the world and in the process they lose their one soul or lose it to the highest bidder. But in doing so, they are reckoning without God. He sometimes allows them to get what they want, only to find out that that very thing becomes their nemesis. 
There is nothing wrong with ambition or having things. But there is something wrong with selfish ambition. And James chapter 3 verse 17 states in part, But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom, which is worldly wisdom, does not come down from heaven, but is earthly and spiritual and of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. Be careful, therefore, who you put your trust in and look to for your help and how you allow them to use you to achieve your goals and how you facilitate their agenda. I warn you to be careful of what you want and go after, especially if you have to compromise your Christian standards or principles to achieve your goals or desires. Be careful how you treat people. Show empathy, sympathy, compassion and, compa and, and kindness towards those that are marginalized and the downtrodden among us. What happens when things get tough? When all of the sources and resources are depleted? When there is no way out and you are at your wit's end? When all of your efforts to obtain and maintain a happy life that you hoped would bring lasting satisfaction prove to be futile? When you have lost your self-respect and your self-esteem? When you are removed from your lofty positions, when in desperation you are tempted to do something that is illegal or immoral or even to take your life, then what or who do you turn to? It is a, it is a time that people cry out and search for God. And even then, it is more to bring relief to their situation than to establish or maintain a meaningful relationship with him. You see, trusting God requires faith. And when all of the security that we look to is removed, when you are no longer needed and you have served their purpose, where do you turn for help when all of your foundations are shaken? It can be earth-shattering. I say, trust God. Stay with God. There's no one on the face of the earth that can do more for you than God because he is the great I am. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is that anchor in the time of storm. He is that rock in your very land. So hold on to God's unchanging hand. He can do anything but fail. He can give you water if you're thirsty. He can give you bread if you're hungry. He can comfort you when you are weary. He can heal you if you are sick. And he can give you peace in the midst of your storm. So give your best to the master candidates. Give him your life. Give him your love. Give him your all. The next thing he tells us to do is don't lean to your own understanding. As new members of the body of Christ, this second part of verse 5 goes hand in hand with trusting God. We cannot and must not rely on our own understanding. You see, our own understanding is limited. It's fallible and subject to error. The word of God tells us that our thoughts are not his thoughts. And his ways are not our ways. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 27 to 29 tells us, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. There are some things we cannot see and understand until our spiritual eyes are opened. As intelligent as we may be, with degrees from the world's top universities, our finite minds cannot comprehend the mind of God. When, he think, when we think he's coming from one direction, he comes from another or in a completely different manner. We will never understand how God could cleanse name and the command of the army from leprosy in the muddy water of the River Jordan. 
nor how he could feed thousands, five thousand men, not including women and children, with two small fish and five barley loaves, and had leftovers, all for the honor and glory of his name. Nor can we understand how it's possible for God to take dust from the ground to make man and breathe life into him. And he became a living soul all for his good pleasure. Nor can we understand why God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die for mankind just so that he can be restored to fellowship with him and have eternal life. People, stop trying to figure out God. He alone is omniscient. He alone holds the reins of our lives. He alone is our Alpha and our Omega, and the author and the finisher of our faith. He knows where the pitfalls and the dangers lie. Since it is he that has created us, he knows what is best for us. He knows the plan and purpose for our life, and would bring out the best in us, and give us hope and an expected end. And everything is for his honor and glory. Do you think you would be able to imagine what God did with Joseph? Would you imagine that a boy that was thrown into a pit, a teenager, could become the prime minister of Egypt? Do you imagine that if Joseph had decided to, you know, go with Potiphar's wife with her, with her commands or demands on him, her advances toward him, if he wasn't faithful to God, if he didn't trust God, he would have been selling out because he would have said, well, you know, this is a quick way to get whatever, whatever it was, right? And that is what some of us do. We sell out because we want the quickest fix to become what we want to become or to do what we want to do. That is how drug dealers operate. That is how some of our CEOs operate. They decide that, oh, I can pick this one and I can pick that one and I can give them a couple dollars and I can give them a little promotion or I can give them a piece of land and that's how they operate. And guess what? When they know they could buy you, they got you. When they know they could buy you, they get you. But when you can stand flattered and say, no, no, my God can provide my needs. My God will provide my needs. When you know who you're dealing with, when you truly know who your God is, when you have proven God as I have proven God, you see the miracle sitting over there? He ran away on a death sentence. The doctors say if you don't go, you're going to die in your sleep or you're going to drop dead. I had time for two and three weeks and three, four and five months to wonder how I can do it, where the money coming from or whatever. He had to go. And the year before that, it was another situation where he had to have part of his colon removed. When they were finished operating, his heart started to do nonsense. They had to shock him back into existence, put him in intensive care. Last year, again, he had to go and have his gallbladder removed. So who am I to be walking behind and saying, God, is COVID time. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no one to turn to. No, my God is real. That's why I can stand flattered. That's why I can stand before anyone and say, look here, trust God. He's faithful. His promises are sure. When you're faithful to God, he got your back. You got to worry about the naysayers. You don't have to worry what people try to do to you. God got your back. God got your back. Keep your life clean so they can't come back at you and say, I give you this. And when they start to do foolishness and nonsense and try to lure you in, you stand on godly principles. Stand on godly principles. Can't do nothing with you. So that's what I could tell you. Whether that's on your job or whether in your home or in the community or in the church. We now have something called the competent authority. That came along since covid could you imagine if they lean to their own understanding? Why we have the chaos we have not only here all over the world, because of the arrogance and the pride of some of these competent authorities. Ain't nobody asking nobody nothing. And the only competent authority there is is God. You see, and so we acting like we're the competent authority and I see what and why and where and all the rest of it. But my precious, 
If you are a competent authority and you ain't connected to God, you ain't going nowhere. Your plans will go awry. You're going to have frustration. You're going to have confusion where everybody bucking into everybody else and ain't nobody know what they're doing. Particularly in this COVID, in this COVID um, pandemic where nobody in the world know what the answer is and ain't nobody giving you the truth. You wouldn't know the truth if it hit you in your face because the persons that are supposed to be competent, they fighting with one another. The ones at the top, they got their political thing going. And so everybody giving you a story, and ain't nobody know yet what is the true story. So I tell them people, trust God and pray. Trust God and pray. Okay, now the paths of the journey are not always easy. Sometimes we have to go through some valleys, sometimes over some mountains, sometimes we have to cross some rivers, sometimes some treacherous seas. But our faith has found a resting place. If Jesus goes with us, which he has promised to do, we can go anywhere and do anything. Our understanding has to be enlightened by God's word, and we have to be led by the Holy Spirit, our helper, rather than relying on our own intellect. When we do that, it results in intellectual pride and arrogance, and we see so much of that, even in the church. We make many bad choices and errors that can cause us undue hardships, that can affect the quality of our life. We must pray for godly wisdom and will in our decisions and goals of life and for revelation of his word, which would transform us into spiritual people. It is only when we are spiritually connected to him can we draw from his fountain of wisdom. The Bible speaks of two kinds of wisdom, and I've already told you about one, which is the earthly kind, which deals with selfish ambition. But that same scripture passage from James chapter 3 deals with the effects of heavenly wisdom or godly wisdom. And it states, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first pure, then peace, living, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. This is the wisdom children of God must acquire and which we must live by. Then he says, in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. When we follow the command to acknowledge God, we are confirming our recognition of him as the source of every aspect of our life and our need for him um, to order our steps. We are, acknowledging, we are acknowledging our weakness and inability to cope or deal with a situation. When we seek his will in all that we do, we are assured in Proverbs chapter 11 verse 5 that the righteousness of the blameless makes a straight way for them, but the wicked are brought down by their own wickedness. In all our plans, decisions, and activities, we should acknowledge God as Lord, and his will should become our supreme desire. This would require us to live every day in close, trusting relationship with him, always looking to him for direction by prayer, meditation, and thanksgiving. Philippians chapter 4 and 6 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, who will give us the peace that passes all understanding and keep our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. By directing or making our path straight, he will lead us to his goal for our lives, remove all obstacles, and enable us to make the right choices. Perhaps God has placed this scripture in my heart, because he knows that some of us are at pivotal points in our lives. Our backs are against the wall because of the economic situation. Some of us have lost our jobs or are about to lose jobs. And some of us are trying to hang on to the jobs we have. Some of our students are entering high school or college. Some of us are about to marry or to be divorced or separated. Whatever the situation, we need to know and be assured that God has not left us. He's still in control of every aspect of our lives. 
we have a good example of what it means to trust God with all your heart in the story of the three Hebrew boys and Daniel. And even though they were being trained to live and work in the Babylonian culture, they remained faithful to their religious beliefs and to their God. That requires a made-up mind. The Hebrew boys were rising stars in Babylon. And um, at the time of their exile, no one could have predicted that they would have ascended to the upper echelons of the Babylonian government in three years. After all, they were prisoners of war. But because of their faithfulness and courage, God used them to leave a powerful and lasting testimony of the one true and living God. By sticking to their convictions, they experienced the power of God in an incredible way. They were commanded that at the sound of the trumpet, everyone must fall down and worship the golden idol. And if they didn't, they would be thrown into a blazing furnace. These three Hebrew boys refused to bow. And the punishment for not bowing meant instant death. Now notice they weren't afraid to come before the king. They were standing before him as men of faith in God. They also wanted him to know that they were aware of the consequences of their action, but they will still stand. They, they let him know that regardless of what the king could do, their God was more powerful. And if he desired, would deliver them from the king's hand and the fiery furnace. They let the king and the accusers and all of the assembled officials know that if the Lord wanted them to die, they would gladly accept their faith, but they would not bow to any idol. They would not compromise their belief. Their only concern was to be loyal, true, and faithful to the covenant they made with their God. They had a hope and a faith that were fixed on the fact that God was their refuge and their strength. And so they were cast into the fiery furnace. <laughs> but there was a fourth man with them. We are told that uh, the, fire, the furnace was heated seven times that uh, hotter than it normally would be. New members, your baptism is a declaration that you have left the word side to join up with God's army. The former things have passed away and all things have been made new. I hope that you all are trusting in that fourth man like those boys did. Because they came out of that furnace and the Bible tells us that they didn't even smell a smoke. Ah, that is what a good God can do. That is the kind of awesome power that he has. And that story is there to let us know that we can trust him to bring us out of any situation we may encounter. The three boys were again promoted because of their stand and because of their bravery. How many of us faced with this dilemma would have chosen to take a stand? How many of us today are faced with situations that require us to take a stand, but instead we prefer to compromise because of what benefits we can gain or that may be lost to us or because of what people would say? Young persons, what stand are you prepared to take when you go to high school or college and are faced with peer pressure to do or be what God forbids? Are you willing to stand up for righteousness and holiness? Are you prepared to be faithful to God no matter what the cost? Are you prepared to break rank with your peers to demonstrate what true ambassadors for Christ are required to be? Then parents, are you preparing your children like the, three Hebrew, like the three Hebrew boys, to be faithful to God? Are you training them in the ways of God so that when they have to make choices in their lives, their minds would not be polluted with the things of the world? Are you living lives that are exemplary so that you can say to your children, follow me as I follow Christ? Can God depend on all of us to contend for the faith as Paul has told us to do? New members, are you prepared for the fight? You're going to have a fight. Do you have your armor on? If not, put them on. Have you really counted the cost? There's a great, great price that was paid for your life. A great, great price. And always, that's why we have the Lord's Supper every so often, because we are to remember we're supposed to keep before us the great price, the great love, 
the great sacrifice that was made for us. So I just want to remind you in this COVID season that no matter what is going on around us, God is still God. Psalm 90 is there to confirm that he is from everlasting to everlasting. Indeed, he is the great I am. Remember that God is. Just remember, God is. You could add whatever he needs or he has meant to you. If you remember that God is, you'll be okay. You can find your own proof that God is whatever or whoever he has been to you and saturate your minds with and dwell on those things. The situation that we are faced with today with this COVID-19 pandemic is one that causes us so much certainty. There is much death and sadness, sickness, distress, turmoil, so many trials, tribulations, so much doubt, fear, and disappointment, so many hopeless, bruised, and broken persons, and sometimes so little faith to the point where we want to give in and, cry, we want to give in and give up on life. And all of these things cause us to cry out, God, where are you when I am hurting? Where is now my God? God, have you forsaken me? But just remember, God is. We are all groping, searching for any quick fix we can find. The problems are insurmountable or seem insurmountable. We feel closed in on every side. We are at wit's end. The troubled waters are over our head. But I'm here again to assure you that God is the pilot. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Don't let what you see distress you because our times are in his hands. Hold on, folks. We can make it. We will make it. Because God has promised to be our refuge and our strength and our present help in the time of trouble, like now. The Bible tells us that weeping will endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Now I know that this COVID night has been long, and you may well wonder, how long is the night? When will it all end? But I believe and stand firmly on God's word that joy will come in the morning. No matter what life throws at us, God can fix it, and he can fix us. He's the only one with the solutions to our present crisis. And just as a reminder, Isaiah 40, chapter 40 verses 28 to 30 states, Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even the youth will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will mount up with wings of eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and they'll not faint. And while you're waiting for the morning to come, Psalm 27 and 14 tells us, Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. I can let you know from personal experience there's, there's God, that this God will give us the peace that we need in the midst of the storm. He is the one that will allow us to sing the Lord's song in this strange COVID land. He is the one that gives us joy to be the strength we need for our struggles. He is the one that can cause us to have streams in our deserts. He is the one that can restore our souls and be that anchor while we are going through this grueling situation. He is the one that provides a throne of grace where we can find help in our time of need. He is the one that can cause those rugged mountains to move and be our bridge over troubled waters. Yes, he is the one that can be our rock in the very COVID land. He is the one that can supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, folks, he can dry those tears. He can put that smile back on your face. He can bring laughter back to your homes. He can restore your, our faith and make the devil mad. Remember, God is. He is the one that will give you the calm assurance that no matter what happens to us, in all the changing scenes of life, he's a promise keeper. He is with us. 
He will go through whatever the situation with us. And if God is for us, what or who can ever be against us? So good news, folks. Lift up your bowed down heads, O ye people. I can tell you that I do know a God who loves us. He allowed the whole world to stop because of COVID-19. Finally, he has our attention. And while we're in this vulnerable state, we are stripped of our pride, our arrogance, and of our dependence on those things and persons around us who we look to as our source. He wants us to consider our ways, to exercise faith, to trust him and him alone. Sadly, many Christians are also giving up and getting weak in their faith. Many are panicking along with the unbelievers. But this COVID-19 experience is truly a test of our faith to see whether we are anchored or whether we are on shifting sand. It's a walk, people, not just a talk. The Bible tells us that the just have to live by faith. And without faith, it is impossible to hear, to, um, to, to please go out. Yeah, Atlantis is closed. Yeah, Bahama is closed. Yeah, Sandals is closed. Yeah, plenty of our jobs are closed. And so where will you go for your help? I received a text this week that says, and I quote, I believe God is giving the whole world the biggest altar call in history. Now is the time to get our hearts right and closer to him, end quote. I also know that the end is near, and we need to repent of our wicked ways and keep our hearts in tune for that great day. In the meantime, I urge you all, while you're going through the season of your life, praise him, thank him, order him, give him glory, and remember to give him your life, your love, your all. Finally, I leave with you the words of the text from Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. And then I'd just like to also give you the words of a song, simple song. It's called Trusting Jesus. Simply trusting every day. Trusting through a stormy way. Even when my faith is small, trust in Jesus, that is all. Brightly does his spirit shine into this poor heart of mine. While he leads, I cannot fall. Trust in Jesus, that is all. Singing if my way is clear. Praying if the path be drear. If in danger for him call. Trust in Jesus, that is all. Trust him. Why life shall last, trusting him till earth be past, till within the jasper wall, trusting Jesus, that is all. And the chorus says, trusting as the moments fly, trusting as the days go by, trusting him, whate'er befall, trusting Jesus, that is all. God bless you. This message today just got me thinking about the word crisis. There's a particular quote by Sir Winston Churchill. It says, never let a good crisis go to waste. And all of us universally, collectively, are in a crisis. But the message given today is the crux of anything and everything we need to hear trust God. No matter the crisis, God is there to create an exodus. God is there to create a breakthrough. God is in the business of displaying to God's people miracles, signs, and wonders. So I simply say this before prayer. It's slowly becoming one of my favorite scriptures. And it speaks to the power of God and the power of God's created. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we may ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. 
The thing about crisis is that it shows you your limitations. Crisis brings you to a place of lack or a place of stoppage. But when you're in the crisis, remember to lean on God because God is the great creator. And we as God's children have the power to create anything that is in God's will for us to create. So it is my prayer that in this crisis, you would have created something, some business, some idea, some second stream of income, some way to make your life better than it was before the crisis. The crisis isn't time to fear, to doubt, to worry, to become discouraged, to become downtrodden. This is the time to trust God and watch God do some things that ears have not seen, eyes have not heard, and it has not even entered into the mind. Because that's the kind of God we serve. So my prayer was almost in words just now and in the word of scripture. My prayer for you today is that the heavenly father, the God of this world, would bestow upon you exceedingly and abundantly blessing. That when you look at the power that God has placed in you from the foundations of this world, it will not allow your faith to be shaken, but your faith will be strong. And if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, be gone into the sea. So through our trust in God, we build our faith and we remove all of the barriers and mountains out of our way. God touch these people right now that they would understand the creative power that you have given to them and that all of their ways they will trust you bless us as we leave this sacred place bless us God because we know this one thing surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives so try your own blessings on the word that has gone forth, may it hit ground where it will grow henceforth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have heard the joyful sound Jesus saves. This is a good time to pronounce that. This is a good time to share that with your friends and neighbors. We have heard the joyful sound Jesus saves. We need to know that message. Let's stand together and sing as we close out.
The Benevolence and We Care Ministries of Bethel have embarked upon a mission to provide families of Bethel Baptist Church who are in need of assistance with a food box once per month for at least a year during these challenging times. As a contribution during this 230 year of celebration, we are asking members and persons interested in To Feed a Family to contribute a small donation of $50. Funds may be dropped off at the church or donated online at the church's website at historicbethelbaptistchurch.org. Special prayer request goes out to the following persons. We pray that God continues to keep you and bring you through this challenging time. Bethelites, due to the current surge in COVID-19 cases, we ask that you please adhere to the protocol guidelines put forth by the government by wearing a mask when out in public, going out only when it is necessary, practicing social distancing while out, six feet, and sanitizing and washing your hands frequently for the safety of everyone. Together, we can beat COVID-19. May God bless and keep you and your families. You are invited to join Bethel Baptist Church Lockdown Workout Sessions every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 a.m. with Brother Don Knowles, who is a certified trainer. Get the whole family involved as we together lose some inches and get into shape. Ladies, you are all invited to join the live talk, I Can Survive This, You Have What It Takes, every Thursday at 6 p.m. with Rev. Levette McFall via Zoom. For more information, please contact the church at WhatsApp 323-5000. Tune in and be blessed. We want to say a special anniversary greeting, a shout out to those who are celebrating anniversaries. We are so glad that you've tuned in. And those who have celebrated birthdays, God bless each of you indeed. It is a gift to be alive. And finally, we want to send out sincere condolences to those families who have lost loved ones in recent times. We want you to know that we are praying for you and we are asking that God provides the comfort and the strength that you need during this time. We thank you so much for joining us and we pray that God would bless you with his choices, blessings on this day. God bless you.